Hello and welcome to the first video in the Baselight Tools series. So today we're going to have a look at shapes and tracking within Baselight. Over the next few videos, we're also going to have a look at stabilizing shaky shots, removing chromatic aberration, using the D-Spot and the Paint tool, and finally we're going to look at adding haze and glow to your grade stack. Jumping into today's video, we're going to talk about how to create shapes, how to edit shapes, so we're going to have a look at uh, creating and removing new control points, how to effectively feather your mask, and also how to track it through your shot. So, there are a few ways to create a shape layer within Baselight. Um, the easiest one, by far, is just by hitting the keyboard shortcut S. So that automatically creates a inside-outside grade layer and a shape operator above that. Another way of creating a shape layer is by adding a grade layer first with the keyboard shortcut P, doing your grade, and then adding your shape layer with the keyboard shortcut S. Using the keyboard shortcut S will automatically toggle the use mat for grade button. If I go ahead and control Z my shape, so I'm just looking at my purple grade layer, and I go up to the insert menu and insert a shape, I'll bump this up with option up arrow. You can see that my screen's just black. So this is because when I insert a shape from the insert menu, it doesn't automatically toggle on this use mat for grade button. If I go ahead and hit that for grade now, you'll see my picture springs back to life. So if you insert it via the insert menu, make sure just to click this foreground button uh, to get what you expect. Okay, so if we click on the shape layer and go up to the parameters view on the top left, you can see that we have a few different sub panels here. The shape management, feathering, and tracking panels. So starting up at the shape management, you can see that we have the new shape toggle on. With this on, and with this changed to the type of shape that we want to create, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this on freehand. Um, I can go ahead and just draw directly onto the UI. And you can see that I'm making control points here. Okay, and now I've created my shape. To see what this shape's doing, let's go ahead and uh, jump to our grade layer with the G key on the keyboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put a really crazy purple grade on this. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> to jump back up to my shape, I'm gonna hit G again. So as you can see, we have two bounding boxes here. We have a blue bounding box, and a red bounding box. If you click on the red bounding box here, you can see that you can control all of your Bezier curves. And if you hit on the blue box here, you can transform the entire shape with the blue bounding box. Now, if I wanted to add a new control point to my shape, I'll just go ahead and click on this uh, blue and yellow line. You can see it automatically creates a point for me. I can go ahead and adjust these Bezier curves by just clicking and dragging. So I might want to create another couple of points here. Uh, I might zoom in with command, middle mouse button, drag. Create myself a new curve here. That's looking okay. Shorten up these Bezier curves. I'm going to zoom back out full screen with function F12. If I wanted to delete a control point, say I created one which I didn't want, I can go ahead and select the control point that I want to delete, so this one, and I can hit command, delete. And you can see that's deleted that control point. Lastly, if I want to change an existing control point's position, I can just click and drag. Cool. So let's talk about feathering. There's a couple of different ways to feather your shape. Um, the first one over here in the feathering sub-panel, when you've got your shape layer selected, um, you can go ahead and just adjust your feather, and you can see the grade operation um, feathering out. If this was more of a subtle <laughs> grading operation, and you wanted to see the outline of your mask with a cleaner overlay, you can turn on the overlay with the keyboard shortcut O. So I'm going to hit O on the keyboard. Now if I want to cycle through the different layer mat options, I can hit Shift O, Shift O again. You can see in my cursor view that it is showing us um, what options we have for an overlay. I personally prefer this one because you can see the image in the background. Um, I'm going to reduce my feather a little bit. Um, so the thing that I don't particularly like about the feather tool is that it's sort of, it's very fat. It doesn't feel very finessed. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce this feathering back down to a midpoint here. And what I'm going to do is with my shape layer selected, I'm going to hit the command shortcut B on the keyboard. So I'm hitting B. And that brings up my matte tool operator in the blur tab. Now the blurring tool is a lot more familiar to me. You can see that it's diffusing it in a different way than the feather tool. And personally, I prefer this. Um, obviously, there are um, times and places for the blur operation and the feather operation, and they can be used in tangent. Yeah, have a play and see what combination of the two that you like the best. So that's looking good to me. I'm gonna turn off my overlay with the O key. Okay, and there's my lovely purple grade. 
but that's how you create a shape. Um, let's move on and talk about tracking. So if I go ahead into my next shot here and I've got a face that I want to track, um, I can go ahead and create a shape layer with the S key. Creates my grade layer, toggles my mat, and creates a shape layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and insert a quick shape with this quick shape drop down. I'm going to go ahead and insert a vignette, which is just a circle shape with a 50% feather. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag my shape into the center of my actor's face. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to transform my shape to more of an oval. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on my control points and just finesse a little bit more. Okay, so that'll do for now. I'm going to go ahead and just um, increase the gain. Okay, so what we might do is we might just decrease the feathering. Again, we might turn our overlay on with O. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce the feather to about 5. And I'm going to add a blur with the B key. And just going to go ahead and increase my radius. Okay, so now that I've made my adjustments to my feathering, I'm going to hit the O key to turn my overlay off. I'm going to go back and increase my gain a little bit more. We've made a very strong grade adjustment on her face there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to head back up to the shape, down to the tracking tab, and we're going to add an area tracker. Before we do, we'll just quickly acknowledge that we could also just keyframe this. So up in the feathering tab, there's a shape motion button. If I go ahead and uh, shift click the keyframe mode, change it to all linear, and create an initial keyframe here. You can see that I've got a little notch. I could drag all the way to the end of the shot, adjust my shape down, because I've got another keyframe, go to the middle, move it again, and you can see this uh, shape motion is automatically keyframing here. Drag along to the middle, make another one, middle of these two points, finesse it again. And now you can see that we've got a rudimentary track. Nice and easy, nothing too complicated, and it kind of works. I mean, it's not perfect, but it would do an okay job. If I Command Z, all of those changes. Okay, so if we didn't want to do it that way and we wanted uh, base light to do the heavy lifting, what we'd do is go into the tracking tab and hit the area button. And you can see that it uh, automatically creates a tracker operator and a bounding box, uh, very similar to the shape that you created. Base Light's gonna use the material inside this bounding box to track your shape. So you can see that we've got, got an area tracker selected. Um, we can delete the selected area tracker if we want, or we can add another one. We're gonna jump down to the start tracking sub panel. We're gonna go ahead and hit track forward. Great, so now that's finished tracking, if you go ahead and click the shape button, if I drag back, you can see that it's following the face movement um, with absolutely no keyframes, which is fantastic. I'm gonna jump to the start of the clip with Z. So if we jump up to the tracker, you see that the tracker has a name. If we go down to our shape in the tracking sub panel, you can see that this name is being referenced here. You can go ahead and unlink or relink to different trackers from this sub panel here. So last thing, say that you want to just quickly finesse a little bit of the keyframes. What you could do is you could go ahead, create a keyframe, shift all linear, create a keyframe here, jump to the point where you want to make a small tweak, and just slightly adjust your control points here. Moving along, just seeing if anything else needs to be adjusted. So maybe at this point, I'll just go ahead and create another keyframe. Just jump to the end. And just go ahead and finesse. And then now you can see the combination of keyframes and my area tracker. It's doing a really good job. Um, and that's all we're going to look at today. I'm going to follow this up with another very quick video about how to create an occlusion mat or negative mat, which is a very useful way of combining shapes uh, within one shape layer. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, feel free to go check out my Patreon if this video has helped you. And uh, I'll catch you next time.